You probably heard of aloe vera. In fact, I would be very surprised if you hadn't heard of aloe vera, especially in terms of uh, skin care. But I doubt you've ever come across this plant before. This is aloe excelsa, known in the local language as gava cava. In English, we call it the Zimbabwe tree aloe. How's it guys? I'm Gus, the African plant hunter. I am in a beautiful aloe garden at the Ewan Rigg Botanical Gardens, just northeast of the capital city, Harare. And I'm here today to show you this extraordinary plant, aloe excelsa, which is one that uh, I believe has enormous potential as a crop of the future. So this is the tree aloe, grows quite tall. This is not a particularly tall one. It can go up to about six meters high. You can really easily tell them when you, uh, when you look at them because of this tall, thin structure. Most aloes are quite short and, and on the ground. And of course, the fact that it's got these lo lower dead leaves that often along the stem, and then these, uh, this kind of beautiful spray of leaves at the top. At the right time of year, sadly it isn't the right time of year now, you'll also see these lovely bright red flowers on top of it. But it's not the flowers we're here for, it's these, the leaves. This is what makes this plant, uh, or gives this plant such enormous potential. So it is well known to traditional healers, they call it inklaba, and what they do as healers is they make a, a decoction, uh, basically by boiling up the leaves, taking that liquid, and then using that topically for a range of particularly skin-related ailments, and also internally uh, to treat stomach problems, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, and a whole range of other, I mean, it's quite a remarkable uh, array of traditional medicinal uses. But of course, it's skin care where the real secret potential is in this product. Uh, I'm not the first one to say that. In the 1990s in Zimbabwe, there was a professor at the University of Zimbabwe doing a lot of research into this plant called Professor Gundiza. And as a result of his research, uh, there was a skincare range brought out. Uh, there was a blend of Kigelia africana, the sausage tree, and this aloe excelsa, and it was fantastic. I remember using it many times myself. Sadly, it's no longer in production. But I'm absolutely convinced that this blends really well with the Kigelia uh, and is an excellent skincare product, and I'll tell you why. Well, the main reason is that it has particularly high levels of a compound in the leaf that's called lectin. Now, what lectin does is it forms, it, it's a coagulant. So when you have a wound and you're bleeding, it causes the blood to clot and, and uh, basically seals the wound. But there's a lot more than just that in here. Uh, so, so many aloes have lectin, lectin in, but uh, Aloe Excelsa has particularly high levels of it. Uh, but there are also phytochemicals in the leaf extract that, or in, in this, it is actually the sap from the leaf that is the really interesting part, which is sometimes referred to as a gel, aloe gel. And the other compounds in there that treat or, or that kill microbes, bacteria, so you've got, a, you've got a, a treatment that is a soothing topical ointment that prevents any form of bacteria and any form of infection and at the same time causes the blood to coagulate and to clot and aids in, in healing wounds. And it is incredibly effective. A friend of mine who was traveling out in the bush once many years ago and she uh, accidentally scalded her face when she opened the radiator of her car, which was boiling, and it erupted in her face. She was completely on her own in the bush, and uh, she, she was knocked to the ground with the shock of it, and when she came round, she saw one of these aloes just nearby, and she went over, and she cut herself strips from the, from the leaf and put them on her face. And when she eventually got to a hospital and the doctors peeled the, the, the aloe slithers off her face, they were astounded at the fact that her face was still in really good shape. And they actually said to her, if you hadn't put that, you wouldn't have had much of a face after that trauma. So it is quite a remarkable uh, plant in terms of the gel. And of course, we all know that aloe vera is used topically for burns and wounds and all that. But aloe excelsa is at least as good, in my opinion, if not better. But that's not the only potential commercial use of it, although it is a significant one. Uh, I believe that 
The recent research that's been done on the anti-diabetes efficacy of aloe extracts has also looked at aloe excelsa and found that aloe excelsa is absolutely effective in treating diabetes. Now, here we are in Zimbabwe. Sadly, we've got growing numbers of diabetes and diabetes patients, and to have a homegrown remedy that can be used as a treatment would be a wonderful thing, wouldn't it? So there's significant amounts of very current scientific research on this plant and on its potential use in that. And I, I do predict that within the next two or three years, we will be seeing uh, diabetes treatments that, that involve aloe extracts, and I hope we can get them involving our own Zimbabwean tree aloe about 30 different species of aloe in Zimbabwe so this isn't the only one but it is perhaps the one that's most readily associated with Zimbabwe although this is not the only country where you find it it is found in other countries across the region there are other uses as well it's also used in veterinary medicine uh, traditional veterinary medicine uh, to treat um, foul pox so uh, I think it's called coccidosis um, and it's very effective to prevent and treat that. Uh, and there is, of course, another commercial potential use of this, which is as an ornamental plant. Very beautiful. There are plant collectors around the world who would love to have a little Zimbabwean tree aloe in their collection. And I do believe that there is significant commercial potential. So to me, this is one of the great so far untapped resources for Zimbabweans as a potential crop of the future and I hold great hopes in that this plant could one day be globally known. Uh, you've probably heard of aloe ferox from South Africa which is a native South African aloe which also has considerable amount of international demand and I think aloe excelsa is our aloe ferox, our Zimbabwean aloe vera. All right, guys, that's enough from me. I'm off to find some other underutilized plants that I believe are useful as crops of the future. If you like this, there's plenty more on my YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram. Just type in African Plant Hunter. You'll definitely find me. And I'm off for some more plant hunting. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye.